Hi, onehoursmarthome.com, and today we're going to show you how to install a GFCI outlet or a GFCI plug. So GFCI outlets are designed to protect you in locations where water may be present or if you have a fault in your electrical equipment. So typically you're going to find these in bathrooms, kitchens, garages, and potentially basements. So the first thing that you're going to do to install a GFCI is make sure the power is off on the existing outlet. So you're going to go do that, turn off the power at the circuit breaker, and then you are ready to get started on working on this. So we've already turned the power off. We know it is safe to work on this now because we've turned it off at the circuit breaker. We plugged something in just to make sure the power was off. And now we can remove the cover from the outlet. So we're going to go ahead and do that. With the cover plate removed, we can now remove the existing outlet from the junction box. Um, just use a screwdriver. If these screws are painted over, just really stick that screwdriver in there and uh, you should be able to get through the screws. If not, you can use a utility knife to uh, go ahead and clean out some of that uh, paint in these screws. With the screws removed, we can now pull the existing outlet forward out of the junction box so that we have better access to the wiring. Right now is a great time to once again check and make sure the power is off down at the circuit breaker and also to hit that subscribe button if you want to support us. And one thing to note before you go any further, um, I just wanted to show you this. So we got a low profile GFCI. We'll put a link to one of these below. It just is thinner than a typical GFCI, which makes it a little bit easier to install. So you can go ahead and click on that one. Um, this is one that we recommend, or we'll have one that we recommend below that has also the child protection at the uh, GFCI. So we'll keep going and just go ahead and now pull this forward, okay? So before you unwire anything, what I recommend you do here is take a picture of your existing wiring so that you know what goes where. And we're just gonna go ahead and remove the wire here and the wire here. Now, you may wonder why this doesn't have a ground wire on it. Well, because our junction box is metal and the ground is actually the metal contact from the outlet to the junction box, which is the same as a ground wire. So if you live in a state or a municipality that uses conduit and metal junction boxes, you're not gonna have a ground wire in here because it's grounded through the conduit. If you live in a state or municipality that does use a ground wire, you're gonna have a green wire or unshielded copper wire, you are going to have another wire here and you're just gonna need to connect that on the new switch, your new GFCI as well. So when you have metal back boxes or metal junction boxes like we have here, you're all good, you're not gonna have a ground wire. It's grounded through the junction box and conduit. If you don't have metal junction boxes, you're gonna have an extra wire here, and you're gonna to need to take this one off and then reinstall it on the new GFCI. Now that we've taken a picture, we can just go ahead and remove the existing wiring. I'm just gonna go ahead and bend this hook a little bit back into position because it got a little bit bent when I removed the old one. Uh, that should be good right there. And then we are ready to take our new GFCI and install it. So on the back of this, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it, it does say hot wire and white wire. Okay, so the hot wire is either gonna be a colored wire or a black wire. And the white wire, that's going to be your neutral wire. And you're going to make sure that you connect it to the correct terminal. So on this one, the black terminal is labeled hot. We're going to connect the red wire, which is our hot wire, to that terminal. And the white wire, which is a neutral wire, we're going to connect to the silver or unpainted terminal here as it shows or says white on the back here. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Just loosen the screws for both of these, and then we can screw the new wires into this GFCI outlet. So we're gonna take the hot wire 
and just put it around the terminal here and then screw this down to secure it. Okay, so we have that terminal secured and now we're going to do the other terminal on the other side. We now have both of these wires secured to the GFCI and what I typically like to do is wrap the GFCI now in electrical tape. I just take the GFCI and I wrap it with electrical tape to cover the terminals. And what this is, is a added measure of protection that these aren't gonna short out on uh, the junction box if you're moving around anything or working on it. Um, doesn't hurt anything. You don't have to necessarily do it. I just do it because it's a good practice and uh, can prevent some issues. So now that we've got that taped up, we can go ahead and reinstall this into the junction box, just like so, and get the screws aligned. And now we're just gonna screw these back in place. With the outlet secured in place, we can now reinstall the cover plate. Now that we have the cover plate installed, we can go turn the power back on at the circuit breaker, and that is what I'm going to go do. The power is turned back on to the GFCI, and typically what you're gonna to need to do is press the reset button to get the outlet back on. Now over here, you can see there's an indicator light. Depending on your actual GFCI that you buy, that indicator light's gonna mean different things, but the indication right now is that this is wired correctly. So that tells you if the GFCI is working correctly, if it's wired correctly, and if it is installed correctly. If you wanna test a GFCI, you just go ahead and press this button and it trips the GFCI outlet. Now I'm gonna turn this back on. One thing that you should do whenever you install a GFCI outlet is use one of these GFCI testers that tells you if the outlet is wired correctly. So it says different conditions that may exist and will indicate you that indicate to you if that outlet is correctly wired or not. So this is the final test. Let's go ahead and plug this in and see if it is correctly working. If we get two yellow or orange lights, that means it is correct. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see what happens. All right. We got the two orange or yellow lights, and that means that we have correctly wired our GFCI outlet. So this is a relatively easy electrical project to undertake. Sometimes you need to do this if you're moving into a new house or you're moving out of an old house uh, per inspector requirements, or maybe you've got a wet location that didn't have a GFCI, so you might wanna install one there to make sure you're in compliance and being as safe as possible. So. We'll put a link to this GFCI tester uh, below as well and the link to the GFCI. The GFCI tester, you can get these on Amazon or you can just go to your big box store. They're not very expensive, just a couple bucks and well worth it to make sure that your outlets are functioning properly and the GFCI is functioning as intended. Another thing to note with GFCI outlets is that if they are properly protected, you have full GFCI protection. Typically, you have a package of stickers here that have different designations for if your GFCI did have an equipment ground or did not have an equipment ground. Now, a GFCI outlet will work without an equipment ground. It will still trip and will still work as a GFCI. In our case, we did have an equipment ground because this is grounded through the conduit system. If you don't have metal conduit, but you still have a ground wire, you would also have a protected GFCI outlet with an equipment ground. However, if you don't have metal conduit and you don't have a ground wire, you would not have a GFCI protected outlet with an equipment ground. And that is very common in older homes that were built before ground wires were run with the electrical wiring. In that case, your GFCI will still operate and will still trip. The only thing that you don't have is an equipment ground. So you would put a sticker on it like so. 
Now, what does it mean if you don't have an equipment ground? Well, if you don't have an equipment ground and your GFCI were to fail, what it means is that that electrical current has nowhere to go other than through you or whatever else it is connected to, the shortest path to ground or the shortest path of least resistance. If you have an equipment ground and your GFCI fails, you still have the protection of the ground wire that provides a path for the current to travel through. Without that equipment ground, that path no longer exists, which makes it even more important that you test and make sure that your GFCI is properly working if you don't have an equipment ground to make sure you're being as safe as possible. So thanks again for watching. If you wanna support us, go ahead and click on any of the links below. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, or visit our website at onehoursmarthome.com. I always appreciate you being here and thank you for supporting this channel.